Okay, thank you so much. Leo, thank you so much for everyone. Here, it's nice to see you again. So well-known people for me. So uh, I love to, to see you here. Thank you so much. Well, uh, perfect. So, well, you already know a little bit about me, 26 years experience in this field, in cybersecurity, forensics, malware analysis, and well, a lot of different things. I am the CEO of SecPro. So, well, I think some of you already know me a little bit. So, as Leo mentioned before, today we are going to talk about our digital fingerprint. And this is very important in OSINT because first you need to know your own digital fingerprint and then you can look for the digital fingerprint from other people, right? Because you need to understand your exposure. So one of the questions normally, normally I try to solve is, are we digital puppets? Our decisions, uh, our way to, to, to act or the way we interact with internet, it's our own decision or somebody is influencing us, somebody is affecting the way we think, the way we act, the, 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 the behavior, right? So it's very interesting to think about it and I, I invite you to think about it. And after this, this uh, webinar, Maybe you are going to think different. So, well, we are going to talk about the information normally we provide to Internet. Normally, in any kind of interaction you have in Internet, uh, you are leaving fingerprints, like breadcrumbs, right? So, I want to show you a little bit about that part, and then we are going to see how to look for that fingerprints, or, well, for some of them, about people right so in any interaction or in every interaction we have in internet we leave fingerprints so what kind of fingerprints a lot of them in the moment you visit a website that uh, that things we do that uh, all the time right you all the time are visiting websites you leave information like what what kind of browser are you using what kind of machine you have your operating system your geolocation, um, the information about your carrier, your service provider, your internet service provider, your ISP, information about your user you are you you have or you are logged or you have logged in your computer, etc. It depends about the different technologies that the websites are using against you, right? So this is very interesting, and that's way in in sec in security operations or in operational security you need to think about it in OPSEC you need to think if you are going to do OSINT you need to think about your fingerprint maybe in other conference we can talk uh, I propose different different subjects the, the last time and the most interesting for everyone were related with people but one of the most important parts in OSINT is operational security or SecOps or OPSEC, as you wish, operational security. How to be anonymous, how to create a SOC puppet account, etc. That's very important. But well, I think it's enough with OSIN with this lecture. Maybe in another time we can we can see the subject again. Maybe the next one can be forensics or hacking or pen testing or well, you let me know truly or in the in the chats and we can talk about different subjects. But well, let's focus in this part. So, how anonymous we are when we work in Internet? Well, let's see a couple of demonstrations. Let's talk about this website. Let me show you Central Ops. It's a very nice website. It's a very, very nice website. I'm going to copy this for you in the chat. Normally, you know that. Yeah, Angie, you're right. I love social engineering. I do that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that idea. So, okay, there is a lot of, of options in Central Ops. I hope you can see my screen. And uh, well, the option we are going to take. You're watching your presentation right now. Ah, you are watching my presentation, not uh, not the browser. Let's see. Let me see if I'm. I need to change my screen here. 
Okay, you should see centralops.net. Okay, you can see that. Yes. Perfect. So in centralops, we are going to select the um, browser mirror option. This tool shows you what you are showing to the world in the moment you are visiting a website. In this case, I, I'm not in my home right now, I'm in another city. So we can see the IP address and all of the information this tool grabs from you, it's through JavaScript. If I allow the scripts here, I'm going to do that, you can see more information, right? More information. I, IP address is normal. You can do anything, but you are going to show it. Even if you are using a VPN, okay, you are going to show the IP address of your VPN or your proxy. The, the tunneling or the mechanism, the connectivity mechanism you are going to use, you are going to show the IP address. If you want to hide your IP address, of course, you need to use a VPN. Well, so this tool can detect if I can receive cookies and can detect the JavaScript version that I can execute in my computer. Um, I can tell uh, the technologies we are using. It can detect that I am using Mozilla in a Macintosh, uh, the specific version, and I have a PDF viewer here, a Chrome PDF, Chrome PDF viewer here, Chromium PDF, everything is detected. Even the resolution, the screen resolution can be detected. And that's just JavaScript. One of my recommendations for you in, in SecOps uh, or in OPSEC, it's to use this tool. It's called NoScript. I don't remember if I talked about this last, the, last time because we talk about so many things. But maybe my recommendation for you is to use this tool, NoScript. NoScript, it's a tool that you can install in almost any browser, but uh, normally I use it in Firefox and allows you to stop scripts in the, in, in the computer or in your browser. NoScript. I already put the the uh, URL in the chat. So no script is this extension I have that allow me to stop scripts and you can select even the scripts you want to execute. So you can configure in a very, very customized way how your browser is going to behave in the moment that you visit a website. So I recommend that a lot. So, okay, as you see, we are disclosing information. There are more tools like this one uh, mm, they can, the EFF, the, and maybe you are familiar with this Electronic Frontier Foundation, they are very interesting and they are very, very concerned ab about your privacy in Internet. They have this tool, I'm going to share this link with you. They have this tool, right, that allows you to test your browser. So you can see if your browser are leaking information or if your browser is leaking information right so i need to allow javascript again so we can see enough information as you see javascript this extension is blocking and blocking and blocking what the um this tool is trying to do right so well the security i'm using don't allow them to grab so much information right now but well you can try in your browsers let's see if if now perfect so you can see how or what information i'm leaking they say that i have a strong protection even allowing them to run in javascript they say i'm okay because i have a lot of tools protection tools or detection tools in the moment i i browse the internet because you know there is a lot of attacks beautiful or amazing attacks like i can extract uh, credentials from memory in the browser uh, we can do a lot of different things in the browser, so that's where you need to have an, enough protection. But well, you can see different detections they, they have right now. That's panoptically, even screen resolution, fonts, even the fonts, that's important. Uh, cookies, so on, so on, so on, so on. The WebGL, that's important. You see how many information I am leaking in the moment that you browse internet right so but even so i have a unique fingerprint normally your browser can have a unique fingerprint that can be identified okay if you are interested 
in this subject, if, to, if you are interested, interested to know uh, how are you leaking information, etc., you can take a look about this beautiful website. It's called Browser Leaks. Browser Leaks tells you in the well shows you different technologies that you that normally websites can use to grab information from you. Even some techniques or some technologies allow the website to know your internal IP address, not your external, not your router. Um, ADSL modem or the, the technology you are using to connect to internet, they can detect your internal. So there are beautiful technologies that the web RTC. Maybe you're familiar with that one. I am afraid that I already mentioned this in the previous session. I hope not. Web RTC means uh, web um, remote uh, telecommunications protocol. So this. Web RTC is used by tools like Zoom, any kind of, of tool that needs access to your microphone, to your camera, uh, in, a, in a web browser screen, are going to use Web RTC. There is a tool that you can use to try this one. IEP8 allows you to detect how vulnerable you are with uh, Web RTC. Let me paste that for you. So you can you can run the leak test. Let's see. So some websites tries to access your microphone immediately, just in the moment they try. Look, this website is trying to access my cameras and my microphones. It's a test, of course, but my technology is stop it. The browser I'm using normally detects that and allows you to select the camera and the microphone, but if you are using a vulnerable web browser or an old version, maybe they can reach access to microphone on camera even without your permission. So I'm going to block them. But even so, I can I can show you the public IP address um, and well, a lot of different information we are leaking with WebRTC. And here you have the different technologies that normally a website can use to detect information about you. The canvas fingerprinting, this is so crazy. This is related about the renderization of the image in your computer. Normally, each computer have a specific finger fingerprint related with the renderization. It's beautiful. Fonts, fonts, it's another fingerprint. But well, there is a lot of ways. I leave you the browser leaks um, URL, so you can take a look. The WebGL, it's beautiful as, uh, as well. Silverlight, Microsoft technology, it's amazing. Uh, one of the most important things that you can try with each one of these leaks, you can see your computer. You can try and you can take a look about what you are leaking, right? So it's very interesting, very, very interesting. So, well, perfect. So let's talk about the investigative process. In the moment you are doing OSINT, and you need information about some person. This, this is huge field. So today we are going to talk about usernames and email address, because I can talk about this. Normally in my training, this is almost like an entire day talking about people OSINT. But well, normally when you are going to do OSINT um, for a person, you need information about a person, normally you have something. You have the name, you have an email, you have a username, right? So we start normally with something. And maybe you have an, an image, you have a photograph. In the previous session, we talked about reverse image search. We already discussed a little bit about that. But, um, well, you have something to start, right? So normally we can talk about SOCMIN social media intelligence, right? Because normally, even if you are a, a very, very um, paranoid people like me, I have social networks, right? Because I need them to work. So I have YouTube, I have LinkedIn, I have, I'm pretty sure that everybody here have at least LinkedIn, at least because you are professionals, you are, expert in a specific field or you are going to start in a specific field. So you need to show to the world what you are doing, your your qualifications, etc. So 
in a professional world, we are going to talk, talk. We are going to talk about LinkedIn. Maybe you have Facebook. Maybe you have Instagram. And we are here in Discord, right? So, all of these kind of social networks provides information, right? And can be useful for us in the moment we are doing segment against a specific person. So we can look in for information in social networks. So what kind of information we can look for? Of course, we, you can look for text. It's one of the important things. Image, videos, right? You know that text can, can provide you an MD5. We already talked about hash. And with that hash, we can look for a specific test in the entire internet. It's one of the things we can do. We already talked about metadata, but when we talk about metadata, we talk about documents metadata. So we were talking about a maze metadata, creation date, access date, a modification date, etc. Maze. But normally it depends about the, the, the document. We already talked about Word documents. We talk about OLE, object linked and embedded to documents. But today we are going to talk about metadata in image. That is a little different, right? Because I think that we didn't talk about that in the previous session. We talk about documents. So normally any kind of digital file contains metadata. What kind of metadata? Not only the maze, the modification access, no. We are talking about geolocation. We are talking about creation tool, device that were used to create that image or to create a document, etc. That's metadata. And we have more metadata. Like when we talk about social networks, we talk about post dates, times, that the people or the person normally used to post. Normally people post sometimes in the same specific range of time. That's a metadata that tells you something. Everything can tell you something when you are doing intelligence. There is no information, superfluous information. No, everything can be useful. In the previous session, we talked about tools that you can use to to register information like uh, XMind or Cherry Tree, etc. We'll talk about that in the previous session. But important part here is that you can grab metadata from post. Recommendations for you. One of the most important when you are doing Sogmint, this tool, the Firefox multi-account container. What happened? Normally you have your own profile in Facebook or Instagram or whatever, or maybe you need to use different profiles and how to do that in the same browser. Because normally if you try, you need to log out, log in, log out, log in, log out, log in. It's, you spend a lot of time using the different social accounts. Well, with this tool, you don't have that problem. This tool, the Firefox multi-account container, allows you to open each one of your profiles in a different container, like an isolated browser. It's beautiful, right? I'm going to, to share this link with you. Nice. So this tool allows me to open in a container. So if I'm going to use, I don't know, Facebook, look, Facebook, Facebook, uh, well, Look, my containers takes control and ask me, okay, which container you are going to use? You can select a specific container. When you install this tool, you have this, this tool here, and you can select these different actions. You can open new tab in a specific container. You can create your own containers, right? So you can go to manage containers, and you can create a new container. I can con call this container OSINT, OSINT1, let's say, OSINT1. And you can put a specific color, a specific icon if you want, and you can say, OK. So now I have a new container. So I can open this specific uh, Facebook session in a specific container. You see? So. I can open again Facebook with another account and then 
I can select a different container. So you can have as many containers, you can see, you can select as many containers as you wish. And it's nice, you, you are going to, to, to save a lot of time, right? Well, that's, that's one of the recommendations when you are going to do OSINT in different social networks because you need to have different profiles. Nice. Well, normally you can have information like a username, right? You know the name of the person. Maybe you can grab information about the username. And um, maybe if you don't have nothing about this person, well, you can try to see if you found this person in a, in a social network like LinkedIn, right? So you can try to see Let's see. And you can review how this the person creates his or her user in a specific social network, right? So normally people, people is great because normally people do the same things all the time, even us. Sometimes, and you can tell me, oh, you can write me if you want, if you use five, six different usernames for yourselves. I don't think so. Maybe you have two, three, but normally you repeat. People, you are, you are cybersecurity people, but people that not, do not work in this field normally have one username. Think about your coworkers. Think about your family. Normally they have one username and they use that in Facebook, in Instagram, in YouTube, etc. Right? So normally you can look for a specific username. Let's see, let's see if I found my my username. Here we can see my username. I'm going to open in the proper container. As you can see, all my social networks opens in specific containers. Because of course I have a lot of different things. But well, here we have one username, David F. Pereira. So we can copy that one. And we can use a tool like Sherlock. Sherlock is a very nice tool that allows you to um, look for different usernames in a lot of different social networks. So you do not make effort here. Sherlock allows you to do this for you, right? So it's very, very nice. Let me show you how this works. So, this is a Linux tool, so we are going to use a Ubuntu can be. Let me go to my Ubuntu machine here, here, this one. So here we have the Sherlock, right? So the, the installation, well, it's a Git clone and you don't have an issue here. You can install Sherlock. You have, ah, I didn't copy for you the the URL, let me copy that for you, and I'm going to write the David F. Pereira for you. He, there you go with the URL of Sherlock. Well, so Sherlock, and uh, the Ubuntu here. So we can see here the Sherlock, and uh, you have the py file here, so we can say Python 3. All of the tools I'm going to show you normally are Python 3. If we are going to use something in Python 2, I'm going to tell you. But normally I, I just use Python 3 right now. So you just need to provide the username. That's it. It's very simple to use this tool. So I'm going to say David F. Pereira. Pereira. That's it. And hit enter. So this tool allows you to look for the same username in a lot of different social networks. You see? And it detects if that profile or well that username exists in different social networks and you can see you see it looks for each one of them if you receive a green um uh, well if you receive an information about uh, about that here well that means that this profile exists and you can look it you can look for it you can just open the specific link and you can see it right in a very simple way. So it's beautiful. But if you don't like command line, I hope you like command line, but 
I don't know, right? So what? Well, this is not me. This is another guy. But uh, well, that person that, did, that David F. Pereira have a username in Twitch. Of course, then you need to test or you need to contrast or verify if, if we are talking about the same person because three or ten different persons can use the same username. But well, you are saving time. So Sherlock, it's one of the tools. There are a lot of web tools that you can use, like name check. It's nice, but only show or only looks in 90 social media accounts. I'm going to copy this for you, name check. Right, name check, and you just need to provide the username, let's say, again, David F. Pereira. So I'm going to say I'm not a robot, and this tool looks for uh, for domains and you can look for usernames here. This don't, don't look for so many usernames, that's why I don't love so much this tool, but this you need. You know, um, when I teach ethical hacking or penetration testing, etc., or red teaming, normally I explain that you need different tools to do the same because you need to contrast results. It's not recommended that you only one tool or you just trust in only one tool. Well, if you see this red, that means that these profiles are already taken. But well, let me show you one of the most powerful, check usernames. There are more in common line, but I, I, I don't have so much time with you, so only we have one hour. But well, you can see, check usernames. I'm going to copy this one for you as well, so you can you can see, right? You can see. Check usernames. They look for 160 social networks. So it's more powerful. You see, it's very nice, nice interface. And you can check for different usernames, 160 social networks. Some of these maybe you don't even knew that exist previously. Perfect. Uh, user search and Lula. Well, you are going to keep the, the recordings and I'm going to publish this uh, in my YouTube channel as well. So you are going to see them. Uh, Jasni is interesting. Jasni, it's interesting because in Jasni, you can look for people that match with a, speci with a specific criteria, like the names, David, Pereira, and uh, let's say, hacking or something like that. L let's say David Pereira only. So you can search a specific criteria in the names of people. So this tool looks in a lot of different source, not only social networks. It gives priority to social networks, but looks in different parts. So one of the things I normally try to do is to automate things to so I can save time, right? So. This tool saves a lot of time because you can see the profiles in Facebook. You can um, uh, look for different social networks as, as you can see. So looks in different parts and provides you an entire result or an entire list of results depending the, the area or the field, in music, in documents. Look, this is me, David Perry presentations. Probably, I, I, I'm not sure, let's see. Uh, uh, okay, let's see if I can, ah, I need to allow these scripts, of course, I need to allow these scripts, okay, ah, uh, this is me, no, this is not me, no, this is not me, but well, you can see the different results. Um, in Jasni. Jasni is very interesting. Well, Lular, uh, this is good as well. You can look for a specific email here, or first and last name, or username. This tool allows you to do that. Let me copy this for you, and you can try in your home, or in your own labs, Lular.com, or Lular.com. So that's, that's very good. Well, the metadata in image, it's very interesting. We talked previously about documents. In 
in image or in pictures, you can graph information. Some of you in the past session mentioned this tool. I'm just going to show you very fast. So there are different tools that can graph information about image, like EXIF tools. It's very nice. And you can use the web interface, sorry, the web interface. I'm going to copy this for you. Yeah, yeah, please. If you have some questions, go ahead. I love to solve questions. So please tell me, and you are going to enrich this session. Because I, if I'm the only one that talk, man, you can be bored in a very fast time. Well, so you can see uh, with EXIF tools, you can look for a specific image if you want. Uh, well, we can look for image in a very simple way. Let's say index of JPG. Uh, let's see what we found. Let's try with this one. Uh, let's see what we have here. I think I already visited one of these results and we can see maybe we can grab some, some metadata. Let's see again. Mm, let's try with this maybe or this one. Let's see. Yeah. So let's see. I already visited this one. Let's see. I hope it's not porn. Well, oh, well, I think it's okay. So we can take the the URL and we provide we can provide the URL here and we can take a look. Uh, let's see. Interesting. Let's let's try with another one. Let's see. Let's say exit viewer. And then I'm going to show you the um, the command line tool that I normally use. Well, there is a lot of exit viewers, as you can see. There is a lot. So you can use any. Let's see. Uh-huh. I just want to. It's interesting because maybe my scripts now. No. Was the room button, yeah, know. yeah, yeah. You're right because my it's, yeah. Uh, show FC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Show FC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say browse, but it's even it's giving me. No, it's it's giving me an error. So I mean, I'm going to show I you. Think you yeah, you type a slash in the link. Let's see. Like image. Zero one I have an additional one. Let's see. Yeah. Mm. Uh, zero ones. Oh yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. Oh. oh. Let me let me paste it again. That's it. Even so. But it's interesting. Let's see. No, that's the right one. Hmm. Let's see with the other one. Yeah, sure. Let me show you. Let's see. This one. Ah, this down now. It's down. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm going to use the command line never fails, man. So I'm going to download um, an image, one of these images. Let's see if it works for us. I'm going to take this one, maybe. I'm going to save it. And uh, we can work with that one. Perfect, and I'm going to copy that image to our virtual machine. It's easier. Mm -hmm. uh, let me put 
put the image in the other con in the virtual machine. Okay. Or I can look it for let me copy. Uh -huh. Perfect. Save it. Let's put that in downloads can be. Nice. So we can use the the exif tool here. We can say exif tool. Exif tool allows you to select the image you want to look for. In this case, we are in, let's see, I am in home OSIN tools. Okay. Slash home OSIN downloads. Downloads and that image. So we can see here all the information about that specific image. Let's see. Here we have the, um, of course, the maze, because I just downloaded right, right now. And we have, look, here we have the camera that they use in that moment, a, cam a Canon Ixus 130, modified 2010, date time date and time original date and times etc if that image were uh, were taken with a cell phone and the cell phone have the gps turned on we grab the geolocation as well so you can see all the information you can have with this tool and sometimes people think that you just can grab information about um of an image and that's grown with exif tools that i'm going to share with you this link give me a second i'm going to share with you this link you can see the different commands you can run to grab different metadata in professional environment and in in a lot of things one of the things we do as company it's a service called digital surveillance one of the things we do is to detect for um, uh, sea levels in the company how ex how exposed they are. So normally we can show uh, the the kids or the children of a CEO or a CFO or CTO of a company. We can detect uh, leaked information about the company, leaked code, um, clone websites, phishing websites, that kind of of things right yeah in external penetration testing it's very useful we uh, we talk a little bit about that because in in the previous session and you, you remember that you were you were right in the previous session i think you you were there and um, we work with uh, infrastructure right with it infrastructure with so we graph information about operating systems uh carriers providers right so we use OSINT a lot, a lot. Well, with this, thank you for your question. In with this tool, you can see the different commands you can use in with EXIF tool. So, thank you, Angie. So you can see if you want to look for information about a specific camera in a group of two, of image, etc. So you have. I prefer to show you how to fish and don't give you the fish. So here you have a very nice tool. Perfect. Any other question right now? It's possible to make. Uh -huh. Okay, already put the browser bigger. <laughs> okay. Well, exit tools. OSIN in Facebook. There is a, a lot of different tools to, to do OSIN in Facebook, but the problem with the tools is that normally Facebook change the uh, the API the uh, the the API all the time. So is not so useful. My recommendation for you is the is to use this Facebook the Facebook search. All the times works and it's very very good. I have some HTML tools to do that, but I'm going to show you a specific tool today. It's this one. Who, who posted what? Let me show you. You can 
look for a specific posts with this tool who posted what so I'm going to copy this for you so you can work for the specific ID of a person let's see let's look for a specific person let's see opening the container let's take somebody let's see um, I don't know look okay this this girl Angelica Garcia so I'm going to take about a look about the username the username of this account is Damian Estrada 982 Facebook gives have a specific user ID numbers and the the proper the proper way to look for information inside Facebook is to use the user ID this is not the user ID this is the username so with this tool you can grab the user ID you just need to provide the user ID the username sorry and this tool finds the user ID let me allow the scripts here <laughs> no yeah yeah thank you Angie. so look now we have the user ID number right and then we can look for specific information like uh, I don't know a location let's put here location like a city let's say a Colombian city like Bogota and I can search for that specific account if she posts information from that city and we can see information in that account but as you see this tool is using the Facebook search to do that and you can you can uh, tune your search in Facebook right and if you want to look for a specific content posted for from that account well I can put the user ID that we already know here and say search but that specific account doesn't have information about Bogota in specific but well you can play a lot with the different options in this tool you can look for a specific days or months or year or time range locations etc or from this is very interesting you can look um, a post associated with or from that person looking for a specific word like let's say love or something so you can you can look for that look things related with love and you see the keyword here from that specific account Angelica Garcia account you see everything related with love here with that specific account so it's very powerful you just need a specific group of keywords and the user ID that you already have with this same tool that's for Facebook let's talk about Twitter Twitter have a beautiful advanced interface to look for information is this one let me show you and it's very very powerful I'm going to show you I'm going to copy that for you in the chat sorry um, <laughs> okay look so here we have the advanced search right so let me put this better for you right so you can look in Twitter for a specific words and a specific phrase some specific words or accounts or filters etc you can you can do almost anything with the advanced search in Twitter but Twitter as we saw with Google the past session we talk about Google DuckDuckGo Yahoo and Bing we talk about dorks in Twitter you have dorks as well and they are so powerful man the time flies well look here you have the different operators Twitter operators that you can use so let's say that you want to see the interaction for a specific account you want to know 
who talks with that specific account. So it's very simple. You just need to open Twitter. Let me take one of the... You have, I already have Twitter. And in search, I can say to and the account. Like David Pereira Zip, that's my account. So uh, David Pereira. So you can see people talking to me, right? You can look for the top or the latest, latest people talking to me, right? Or people interacting with me or photos sent, sent to me, right? Different photos. <laughs> I, I miss presence. Well, 2018, no pandemics yet. So or videos sent to me, right? So you can see the different dorks you can use in Twitter. You are going to have this, uh, this present, well, this, this video, so you can see the different filters you can use. Uh, th those are amazing. And uh, well, you can look for uh, media. Ah, let me show you an interesting thing. You can look for media. You can look for video, etc. So you can use filter colon and something like let's let's do something like this. You can look for in your Twitter. You can say something like uh, raíces.org, let's say, and filter media filter filter colon media. I can put this bigger. Yeah, no. Rises.org filter media. Ah. <laughs> Rises.org and filter media. So you can have that kind of filter, but well, it's, I don't remember. Which, which one is the handler of Rises? Uh, what is the handler? Is raices dot raices raices? Let's see. Let me see if somebody already wrote raicescyber.org. Thank you. Raices cyber. Let me put it here. Raices raices cyber.org and filter media here. So you can see media related with traces org so you can see the different dorks you can use ah another thing you can look for attitudes so you can look for a specific attitude like a bad attitude or similar so you can look for i don't know let's say let's say defcon defcon and you just need to say colon and the the sad emoji, right? So you can look for a specific look, a specific bad attitude, having the word DEFCON in the Twitter. You see? You can take a look about that. So bad attitude related with a specific subject. You can put the handler. So with Twitter, you can play a lot. So, well. In LinkedIn, you can use dorks, Google dorks. We already talked about dorks in the previous session. So you can use that in LinkedIn. So you just need to say site. You remember that. I, I, not everybody were in the previous session. So you just need to say site, site, LinkedIn.com. Uh, sorry. And you just need to say David Pereira Cyber, let's say Cyber and you are going to found that's me, my profile so it's very easy to use dorks that's me like sidelinkedin.com and those dorks works with any kind of social network you can do the same with instagram if you want so you just need to say site instagram 
Instagram and uh, let's say Instagram.com com and let's say beyond beyond so here we have the the first one is beyond instagram so you just need to use a google doc there are more tools but i don't have enough time so i don't want to to just show you something but well you see emails emails are so important in in OSINT so you can use different tools one of the nice tools you can use is hunter.io uh, hunter allows you to look for information for emails from a specific companies Let, let's look for defcon let's say defcon and let's find email addresses related with defcon let's see Let's see. Mm, there are different domains. Let's say defcon.org. Right? Defcon.org. And let's see. Perfect. So you have different emails. Shoved at Defcon, batch at Defcon, Jeffy, comments. So, some, some emails. That's nice. Like 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 emails. Beautiful. If you are not sure about how is the format, because you don't know if it's a name dot last name or first letter of the name and the last name, etc., you can use tools like emailformat.com. Right? So, they have different different domains popular domains i'm going to copy this for you sometimes they have popular domains or you can browse you can look for defcon.org let's say and it's going to look it exists and it's going to show you how normally they have the emails and look for those emails so they say okay they have first name 32 percent probabilities 26% probability is last name and so on so on so on so this tool gives you probabilities and found emails at defcon.org and you can see the representative email addresses as well let me allow the script the scripts here and you can see them right so this tool is beautiful, allows you to detect emails for a specific company, even if you are not familiar in the with the format that they are using. I love this tool, Infoga. Infoga allows you to do the same, but as I like, in command line, right? So I think, you, I, I, well, let me show you the Infoga tool. I'm going to copy the, the link for you. You can install this in your Kali or in Ubuntu or in the tool, in the operating system you want. I'm going to copy this for you. This is beautiful. I'm almost done. Give me, have a little patience with me. And I have more, five more minutes. Well, look, you just need to provide the domain with dash D. Uh, like always with dash dash help, you have the help about this tool. And well, this tool, is going to look in different search engines like a meta search where they talk about meta search in the previous session so this tool looks in different with different search engines and grab all the emails possible so it's one of the most effective ways to uh, to grab emails from a specific company let's see if we can look in pgp if you, the, the company use a public PGP signature, it's going to found, look, a lot. We found 18 in PGP, so we have so much than the emails we found with Hunter and the other tools. So more than 10, of course. Well, like 23, 24, 25, more or less, you see? So it's very effective in FOGA. There are more tools, but well, we don't have so much time. Email Finder, it's a nice Chrome extension you can install. Um, let me copy this for you. 
email finder. It's nice, it's for Chrome. Do similar things like the Hunter I already showed you or, or the Infoga. But as I mentioned before, normally I contrast tools. Normally I contrast tools and um, I don't remember if I have that email finder here in my Chrome, I think so. So um, uh, you can just visit a specific uh, let's see if I have it here and, uh, mm -hmm. no I don't have it installed but well you can install it it's very simple I don't want to spend a lot of time here well you can do verification one of the most important things okay you have an email but you need to verify that in that this email really exists so you have different tools we can go with one just to save time this one from central ops i'm going to copy that one for you in the chat and then we can take a look about the one of the emails we already found like neil at defcon.org let's say so we can try to verify if that email ex really exists so do DNA, uh, this executes dns validation about that um, that email starts an smtp session and try to validate the email so uh, as you see it can resolve the email server he can con can connect with that email but don't receive a, a and a favorable uh, reply code. So we are not totally sure about this email, but at least the email server works and the email server answers. So you can try with different tools like email Hippo or Verifalia. You can take a look about them. So you can validate if an email really exists. Another tool similar uh, to the tools we already used, this, this is the email permutator. I'm going to copy this for you. And you can try, if you are not sure about the format of an email, you can try with this and you can put, can put the first name of a person, the last name and the domain. And this tool, let's say David Pereira and my domain is secpro, secpro dot llc let's see and permute it and this tool creates a lot of possibilities that you can try david at secpro.lc pereira at secpro.lc etc so it creates 34 emails probable or potential emails that you can try just with the name and the domain of this person email permutator last part the worldwide OSIN map you are looking for people okay how to wh how to know the proper source i'm going to show you this one this one is the worldwide osin map with this map you, you can you just need to select a specific country and you can see in that country what kind of search engine you can use for a specific for person for people let's say in spain okay i can go let me allow the scripts here i can go to Spain and they show you all the OSIN search engines in that country so you have the cadastral map and vehicle information oscaro.es if you need to look for vehicles for for vehicles let me allow this so you look, can look for plates look here you have the plate you can look for plates and um, so on so on so on it depends about the country you need to look for sometimes well this is for people so you have the yellow or white page to for to look for people so you have the worldwide map so if you need to do an investigation in argentina chile peru etc well you you know tools that allows you to look for a specific um uh, search engines in the specific country because sometimes google don't have everything you can look for phone numbers as well. You can have a, a phone number and look for phone numbers. This is an alternative to TrueColor. Normally people know TrueColor. 
So you can select a specific country and then look for phone numbers, right? So this tool provides the search engines for phone numbers in each country. It's very useful, this number. TrueColor, the most probably thing is that you are familiar with TrueColor. TrueColor is a tool that you can install in your phone and allows you to look for a specific phone number, right? So if somebody wants to try, just tell me. We have one more minute only, more or less. If somebody wants to try, just well. Uh, let me copy that for you, the true color. I suppose that you're that you're familiar. This is very well known. There are more, but this is very effective. But there are more than true color, and that's it. I I finish on time, almost, almost on time.